everyone, welcome back. You are listening to h a n g u g o c h a n j e on TBS EFM 101.3 in Seoul and the surrounding area. You're hanging out with me, Kayla, and I am not alone in the studio. I got the wonderful, the magnificent Chef Matthew in the house with me. Hello, Matt. Hey, how you doing? How you doing? <laughs> how you doing? How you doing? <laughs> I feel like I'm back home here, (laughs) but it's been a full week since I have seen you here. And you know what? I feel like normally I would try to keep this a secret from our listeners, but I feel like we're all such a big family here. I might as well share the secret with them. We're just kind of going to have some fun and Matt and I decide we're just going to throw our script to the wind here yeah. and talk about what we want to talk about today. So, yeah, we, we had prepared for today. It'll be a surprise. We'll uh, let you know next week. It'll mm-hmm. still be just as valid. Mm-hmm. But you know what? I was just over there in the control room mm-hmm. we, uh, listening to uh, Kayla go over the news, and we were talking about uh, those kitchen appliances mm. so why not go a little bit further and in, uh, further into detail yeah so like forgive us if we sometimes take a moment to collect our thoughts here mm. because we literally are just ignoring all of this so like we're today. doing like roughly like <laughs> uh, about five percent only about five percent less preparation than we normally do <laughs> right <laughs> but um yeah you know it's interesting because matt here is you know he's a chef mm. and very familiar with kitchen appliances me as you all know Zero cooking whatsoever here in Korea. However, I have told you that I have done my fair share of cooking with my stepfather. That is true. Yeah, Yeah. no, I mean, he's basically, from what you've told me, he's the one who's really instilled this love of food in you. And, you know, so I I bet we could have a conversation. I can throw these terms around in Korean. Mm -hmm. And you know what? We'd have no problem keeping up. I'm hoping so. Crossing my fingers here. And the thing is, I'm hoping that we're going to enlighten you guys to what the Korean kitchen is starting to look like these days. Because I feel like there's a very old idea Mm -hmm. of what the Korean kitchen looks like. Sure, sure. And it is... No, it's definitely changing these days now. It's changing. And that doesn't necessarily mean it's getting westernized. No, no, Yeah, no. because I think there are still very culturally specific foods that we eat. For sure. You know, I think, um, you know, kitchens are different sizes. Mm-hmm. And I think that, yeah, just the needs are different. I think there are a lot of really hot items that are uh, being sold out here that would never sell in the West mm-hmm. and 100%. vice versa. Okay, mm-hmm. so where should we start, Matt? So let's talk about the term first, right? Mm-hmm. Well, So the term for these kitchen electronic About appliances is chubang k a j o n jepum. So k a j o n jepum, that ka is like kajok, so like family, right? Yeah. Jeon, j e n g g i electric. So chubang, kitchen, kitchen. family appliances, Makes kitchen sense. home appliances. Exactly. And that the, you know. just basically breaks it down there. That chubang there is the name of the room. And then, like you said, the k a j o n there is just that family electric appliances. Mm-hmm. And then the jepum is, of course, the home appliance that we have. Sure, so, sure. of course, we've got our home appliances to break down. There are a ton, though. This could take us all day to get through. You know what? Let's do it all day. You know, we'll just tell all the other DJs for the next shows. <laughs> you, know, you, don't to, you don't have to call in today. <laughs> You guys can take the rest of the day mm. off here. We're, we, we're, got we, got we got this. We got this till yeah. midnight. <laughs> But all right, so we, we've got the these this first kind of overall arching umbrella. I feel like the best place to start is like the biggest and the baddest. Right, and I think that in terms of just like the biggest kitchen appliance in anyone's kitchen is going to be their oven mm-hmm. for sure. And you know, and you know, in Korean it's a tricky word. It's oven. Oh so, yeah, you know, definitely you know. a difficult mm-hmm. one to uh, to tackle there. I'm not sure if we can all keep up. This feels like the Fashion Friday show when s u y e n and I are going here, and we're like sunglasses is. Sunglasses. Like, oh. I'm not sure if you guys got that there. <laughs> oven is open um, again here. But yeah, I feel like a lot of people assume that Korean uh, houses are not equipped with ovens. What, are your, what is your take or your, your perspective on this? I mean, a lot of them still aren't. Mm-hmm. However, it is. I, I, I remember reading this. Um, I would have the numbers, but I'm not prepared today. <laughs> but uh, I, I, do, I do remember reading this um, a few months ago. And the oven is probably one of the fastest adopted. Uh, kitchen appliances in, within the past couple of years. And yeah. that's because small ovens are so good now. Mm-hmm. The oven that I have at my place, it's about maybe only about 30% uh, larger than like a microwave oven, mm-hmm. but it is a legit oven. oven. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's nothing I can't do in this oven that I couldn't do in a larger Western style oven, except extremely large things. You know, I, I'm only limited by size. I was going to say, like cooking a turkey. That I can like, do, actually. You can cook a full bird in a this. A 14 pounder. So I can, kick, I can cook like a six and a half kilogram uh, turkey in there. 
However, when you're talking about the larger ones that you find in the U.S., like around the 10 kilogram, yeah. like 22 uh, pound mark, no, no, we can't do that. Which is why when we do Thanksgiving uh, at, at our house, I bring my oven from my house to my mom's house. So we have two ovens going. I'm not kidding. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just picturing Matt's household here getting just this heat, like just incredibly hot atmosphere with two ovens going at once, just cooking all the birds, all the sides. Oh, see, no, we, we thought of this. We don't we don't want to heat the oven, uh, the, the kitchen up too high. So we have one going in the kitchen and I put mine in the living room so we can all sit around it like we're watching a TV. This is amazing. Mm-hmm. You guys have the best setup. So... <laughs> We've got this oven, but like you said, I feel like uh, the thing that we we have assumed oven in English as the one that you kind of install almost into the wall. Sure. And then in Korea, we have those kind of smaller toaster oven type mm. ones as well. We, we would often refer to them almost as convection ovens. Right, as a convection oven. I think that's when you're specifically talking about like a convection oven. It means different things. When you're talking about a professional convection oven, you're talking about something very large and expensive. But Mm. when you're talking about for home use, you're oftentimes talking about like a shrunken down version of one. So there could be a little bit of overlap there. The convection refers to the fact that there's a fan Mm -hmm. in there. And so with a lot of these smaller home uh, models, because they're so small and they can't really – pump out the heat that they need to, they have that fan Mm -hmm. in order to keep that hot air moving. Yeah. And so when oftentimes when you'll hear about a toaster oven, it'll be called a convection oven. And then a convection oven could also be a full-size oven. There, So you really have to know what you're looking at when you're buying it. There are a lot of overlaps in terms there. Interesting. So if we were looking at like a, a convection oven that has an actual fan in it in Korean, would it just be convection oven, oven in Korean? Right. And then, you know, even air fryer because that's technically a convection, convection. oven too. It, the, the, the water gets a little bit murky. Murky there yeah. as well. Mm-hmm. So there's a couple terms that you could be looking at depending on your name's ale. Convection oven. Either way, they fall under right. that little mini umbrella of oven there. Yeah. Uh, Leah May here says Thanksgiving needs that large size oven. Oh my God. At or least two it, size, two medium sized ovens. There you go. Don't if, knock it. if you're in Matt's house, we, we are, you know, MacGyvering it around there. <laughs> What's that mean? Uh, modern problems require modern solutions. Modern solutions. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> now, once we've got those ovens taken out, I feel like the next place to go here in, in Korea, at least, is that coffee culture. Yes. Mm -hmm. And this is another one that's seeing a lot more adoption lately just because the price of coffee is not necessarily so high. There is what's known as the, you know, the the coffee index. Mm. Not They don't use the word coffee. It's that big chain. Yes, of course. It's essentially, it's like, what is the average cost of like this coffee in every country? Yes. And Korea is a little bit higher on that coffee index. Mm -hmm. But it's not unreasonably high. However, because of the coffee culture, which... Which is not you know, it's not necessarily something recent. This idea of taking a break during the day, mm-hmm. having tea, mm-hmm. coffee has been drank in Korea since the late 19th century. It's mm-hmm. been around for a long time, and so the idea of stopping everything, going with your coworkers, you know, spending a date with your you know with your significant other at you know long afternoon to the cafe. These are all very very Korean things. Very true, but. Also, being frugal is also a very Korean thing as well, which is why I think that coffee maker adoption is going up so uh, is so high lately as well. Yeah, and I've been seeing a lot more people. We, we've actually talked about on the show how with quarantine, a lot of people have been doing more things like a home cafe mm-hmm, as mm-hmm. well. And so you'll see things like French presses being sure. done at home and making your own home coffees as well. So lots of these coffee machines. So in Korean, is there... Well, so it'd be kopi kige, but I mean like that, but there's so many different types yeah. that you're talking about. You have capture kopi, mm. like, you know, the ones with, that have the, the, you know, the, the capsules, capsules right? yeah. And then you have the press kopi kige, mm. you know, like the ones that you're talking about. The so, actual press down ones. Right. So kopi kige is the just the kind of the catch-all term. Yeah. Yes. You know, esp- Espresso gige. Yeah. Cool. De- depending on what you're needing right. and what you're looking for, even we can't say the brands online or, you know, on air, of mm. course. Here. So depending on what you're looking for, if it's an espresso, the capsules, the presses, uh, you can just put those in front of kopi kige because kige here is a, the term for machine. machine yep. And uh, that will end up finding you a search for whatever you're looking for here. Mm-hmm. So we've got those there with our coffees. And now now I feel like we're, we're kind of moving on over into another type of machine in a similar sure. area. What? 
And I think this is one that's really kind of essential for smaller home living. Yes. And you know, because you just don't want to have a full size blender or what we would call a mixogi mm. here in Korea. If you if your place isn't that large, so an immersion blender or hand blender. That hand blender. Hand I blender. love that. Yeah. Just like yeah. 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 I'm putting my hand up in case you know it wasn't clear. Hand <laughs> blender. Brrr. Yeah. And, you know, the great thing about this is that it has so many different attachments. Yeah. So it, this one thing takes the, uh, what is it, uh, the, the place of a uh, blender. It takes the place of a food processor. Yeah. And while, yes, you might not necessarily get the oomph, the power that you get from a full-size blender, it does 99% of what you need to do. I have a pro-quality kitchen, uh, was it, full-size, like, industrial kitchen blender at my house. Yeah. It never gets used. It never gets used. I use the immersion blender for 99% of the things I need to do. This is coming from a chef, everybody. Mm -hmm. And I actually, Miss doesn't cook at home, never does anything. Uh, I actually own one of these here because Mm. I was in a smoothie kick for a while. Yes, yes. Uh, I was on a huge smoothie kick. I would make them all the time. And it was just one of those easy things where I could just sit here Mm. and kind of mix them around. And I, I have to say, yeah, it just kind of does everything for you if you need to make kind of soups it kind of chops it all up grains as well it kind of does everything and the best part about it is is that the thing i hate about the blender is two things washing that big cup and then putting away the heavy base yes this one you just blend it in whatever the in your smoothie like container in your you know in your puning you know like one of these yeah you can you can just blend it directly in there and then just toss the stick end into the sink and then you know maybe wash it that day it's the easiest thing that's my biggest problem with like a blender is because the actual part that is the the sharp blade is still at the bottom and getting that clean is the sure, hardest part sure. so i highly recommend you know if you're living alone for those who of you you know like myself these are one of those great things to have in the house you know mm-hmm. to kind of handle all your needs but for those of you who are kind of wondering how to say immersion blenders we we would kind of just say these blenders as like mixogi right yeah or so this would be hand blender hand blender hand mixogi mm-hmm. or stick Mixo- blender stick, stick mixogi yeah because it's you know it's, it's shaped like a stick mm, mm. that makes sense and now this was the one thing that I wanted to kind of clarify for everyone because it's so easy to get confused with the Korean versus the English because sure. We classify those sorts of things as blenders. Yes. And we classify the things that make like panjuk as mm-hmm. mixers. mixers yes. But in Korean, they classify the things that make smoothies and mm-hmm. whatnot as mixogi. Sure. And also here we have kind of just like, you know, the hand or the stick. They add that on for clarification mm-hmm. here. Um, so you just to kind of be aware that when you're looking for those sorts of things, that kind of smoothie maker or this immersion blender here, you're going to be looking for a mixogi, just sure. kind of that mixer there. If they were looking for something that kind of makes that panjuk sort of thing, would that also be able to use a mixogi as well? Would that kind of be able to describe just the panjuk mixogi? Or like, would... Yeah, like if they call it a mixogi, they would put panjuk mixogi, but generally they'll call it a panjuki. Just a instead. panjuki. Yeah, so instead. just like literally a dough machine. A dough machine. A dough machine. Batter machine. Yeah. <laughs> just That's a... what my wife does. She just looks at me as a dough machine. <laughs> I will say your your wife makes some of the best baked goods I've ever had. Though. She, is she is a better is a, baker than uh, I am now. She makes some of the mm. best cookies ever. So shout out to mm. you, Jog, on the air. I hope she's listening here. But um, so again, keep that in mind when you're looking for those sorts of things. You have to specify exactly because there's so many different types of kige that we have here. You'll have to specifically state which ones you're looking for. You can't just say mixer because you're going to get 30 different types of options. Mm -hmm. Now, what's the next one we need to look at here? So the ones I think if you're looking to eat like a Korean and you're not in Korea, Mm. I think the probably the two most essential ones are the things that allow you to cook at the table because Mm. here in Korea, we love to cook our food right in front of us. It's not just Korean barbecue, but at home as well. Yeah. And so you need two things. You need a portable burner Mm -hmm. and then you need a grill and then since it's indoors at home it's going to be an electric grill so that portable burner is a gasurenji Mm -hmm. or a hudeyong gasurenji because your stove top is also a gasurenji as well very true but you know most people can tell what you mean by context yeah and then the uh the griddle 
would be a c h o n g i k u d i l So this is kind of easy here if you once you kind of hear it and break it out, break it down. That gas range, mm-hmm. of course, it's just a gas, a gas range. range. Easy yeah. peasy. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just pronouncing it there in that Korean accent. And then uh, the the grill pan, the gr- grill pan, grill pan. Once again, well, that works. That works. No, don't even worry. Don't even worry. That, that totally works. You're getting to the point where you're getting to the point where like you're. You're, you're 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 looking three steps now, and now you're now you're, oh, now you're double. Oh uh, gosh, I'm just like mixing yourself. them up. It's the tonggi k u r e there sure. that we're talking about that that kind of grill that overlays that we always cook on. Top right. Of it. So yeah. if you're going to do samgyeopsal at home, mm-hmm. that's what you would do it on. Yeah. And then you know the other thing, those gas burners, the gas s e d n g i are so common mm. that you can find that any any convenience store will carry the butane canisters. Oh, like, for sure. They you, you, anytime you go on a camping trip, anytime you're basically looking to eat. Anywhere that's not at home or a restaurant, you you know you can take one of them with you. Oh, for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I we would often actually use these uh, when I was a teacher. We could use a lot of these for camp prep as yes, well. Yes, they, yes. A lot of so for any of you who are maybe our teachers here in Korea looking for some ideas for your students, things that they can do at home. A lot of families have these at home and are able to use these. This might be a good idea of some sort of project that your students mm. can use as well here, using these sort of at home appliances and teaching them what we. call them in English and kind of using them at home as sure, well. Sure, sure. It was a great project. My students love them. <laughs> Now, what's another one here that we have? Okay, so the next one that we have on this very hastily put together list. Love it. Is a trend that has, by and large, mostly passed. Mm. It's the c h a k j u p k i Yeah, this was huge for Absolutely years. Absolutely huge. Oh my gosh, my stepmom was so into this. I'm calling you out, Lori. I know she's listening right now. Um, this was so big. I can't say the brand name that she was into for forever, but every morning she would get up and have her oranges and her lemons and her little thing of like celery, and she would put this through the juicer <laughs> and just make this morning juice every morning. And my dad was just like, that thing is the loudest thing mm-hmm. in the history of existence. This is a juicer, right? It's, it's a juicer. It is a juicer and it is one of those things that brings you so much joy for three months mm. and then you just fall out of the routine and yep. then you never use it again and then you re-gift it to somebody <laughs> it's that's what matt told me when we were we were chatting about this during the break he's like this is the most re-gifted appliance in all of korea mm-hmm. the t a k t i p k i right it's you know you say with a smile oh enjoy but really <laughs> what you're saying is you deal with this <laughs> Because yeah. it's, it's true, honestly, here. You're just like, oh my gosh, I'm totally going to wake up and use right. this. No. It's a good idea, right? And the thing is, is that the one that the big major brand here in Korea, that actually became pretty world famous. Mm-hmm. Like that brand name is the one that a lot of people were looking for, even in the West. Yeah. The problem is, is that it ma- the, to make that kind of, you know, but, like carton juiced quality, like really smooth, yeah. uh, you know, like, you know, fruit forward juice. Yeah. Is that it has these really fine screens in there. Mm-hmm. And, you know, just the, the amount of time that it takes to clean out those like mesh part, you know, those mesh Too screens much work. was just, no matter how good the juice was, you start realizing why hotels charge like $14 for a glass of freshly squeezed yeah, orange not juice. Not worth the work, guys. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm going to put my, this has got Kayla's stamp of no a p p r o v a l Here, I, I am not for the t a k t i p k i here. No juicers from me. All right, now we've got time for one more. If you could pick from this list what your, your, your last kind of uh, appliance for our listeners would be, what would you pick? Here? This is a great timing because this is probably the one that's highest on my own personal wish list. I don't own one yet, but I really want one. Oh my gosh, I got to write this down. And it is so specific to Korea. Okay. And it, it's brilliant. So it's basically, so here in Korea, we have this system where we separate all our garbage. Yeah. You know, you, like all of our recycling gets separated, you know, and we have what's known as i l b a n s e d e g i which mm. is basically anything that's not recyclable. Mm-hmm. But third category, we have u m s h i m u r s e d e g i Yeah. Basically, any kind of food that's comp- uh, compostable. Yeah. You know? And so basically, we have what's known as u m s h i m u r c h a r i g i b u n s e g i Interesting. Is this kind of like a a waste kind of that where you put your food waste in it? There, where you put your food waste in, and it dries it and compacts it. And here's the thing: this u m s h i m u r s e d e g i is something that no one enjoys dealing with. Like it's it, true. It, like it's not. It's not horrible, right? But no, no one enjoys this process. No. However, it's just one of those things that anyone I know who has one is like, ugh. It's like a little moment of happiness in my everyday life, just being able to put it in there. And then when it comes out, it's just this 
uh, was this like this very like non volatile? It doesn't smell. It, it, it reduces a lot of the smell too. Oh. And then you know you're you know because the thing is like a lot of the times if you have a family of four, family of six, you might have this much le- you know like uh, food waste. It's not necessarily wasted food, but you know it's all the trimmings of yeah. the ends, the peels of everything. Yeah. And it, every day, you know, someone's job. It's usually the dad's job to walk out of the house. You know, to like take bag the nasty it up, smell. You know, yep. to take it out. Mm. And then it's just one of those things. Can you say it one more time for our listeners just so they know? Because this is such a Korean thing that we have to take that nasty bag out there to the side of the road. Can you one more time for them? It's the 음식물 분쇄기. 음식물 쓰레기 분쇄기. I'm writing this on my wish list. Yeah. Everybody, just so you know, this Christmas, that's all I want is just that 음식물 쓰레기 분쇄기. Well, Matt, I am so happy that we kind of just threw the script yeah. to the wind here because this is so much fun learning about all these different home kitchen appliances. I hope you guys found this useful. Maybe you guys can put something on your Christmas wish list as well. Matt, thank you so much for being here. Always a pleasure. 